Hello and welcome, this is Edgerald and today I'm doing a mod spotlight on Open Peripheral. Open Peripheral is a computer craft mod by Mikey Moo that turns many blocks in the game, including mod blocks, into peripherals you can interact with. So let's see what this is all about. The Open Peripheral mod adds two items to the game and one block. First you've got the terminal glasses crafted with two advanced monitors and one networking cable. Uh, then you've got the terminal glasses bridge which is crafted with four wireless modems, four wire modems and one block of redstone. And finally you've got the open peripheral guide which you craft with one book and one networking cable and one piece of redstone. Or if you have uh, mine factory reloaded you can replace the networking cable with plastic sheets. So the Open Peripheral Guide actually uh, has a few pages that tell you information about the mod and kind of how to use it. Uh, the glasses are used to display information on the screen and this information is going to come from your programs. Now the Terminal Glasses and the Terminal Glasses Bridge work together. First you want to put the Terminal Glasses Bridge next to a computer and then to link to it with the glasses, you simply equip the glasses in your action bar and right click on the bridge and that's going to equip the glasses automatically and it's going to assign them an ID. Now the next step you're going to want to do is to link your um, terminal glasses bridge to your computer and you're going to do it like this. Okay, so the most basic thing would be to create a variable, in my case bridge, and run peripheral um, wrap on whatever side you put the bridge in. So in my case left. And now they're linked, the variable and the peripheral. And I can call functions from the peripheral. Now the first function I want to show you is add box, which take these parameters. First of all x and y which correspond to the x and y coordinates from the top left of the Minecraft window. Next we've got width, height, hex color and opacity which are properties of the box. So, let's create a very simple box. Bridge at box, I'm going to create it at 5.5 from the top left of the screen with width of 70, height of 10 and the hex color you specify like this, 0x and then the hex code. In my case I'm going to make it white. Our opacity goes from 0 to 1, so I'm just going to say it half opacity. Save it, run it, let's take a look. White box on the top left of the screen, just like how is I specified. But you can not only make boxes, you can also make text, and there's another function for that. So let's take a look at add text. Add text accepts four, four parameters, x and y, just like add box, but then you uh, put the text itself and the color. So let's try making some text. Bridge, add text, 6, 6, um, let's see width of, oh you cannot specify width, sorry, um, hello world, and then 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, why not? Let's save it, run it, let's see what happens. And perfect, I got my white box, and I've got my um, kind of black text. Another important function is clear. Clear clears all the boxes and text from the screen. So you just call it like this. Alright, so let me show you something that you can use to not have to redraw boxes. Now first you wanna, uh, after you call text, you wanna store, there, store that in a variable. So let's say I store the add text call into the hello variable. Now I can run some methods on that variable. For example, hello set text. And I can change the text without having to uh, call add text again, which is much more efficient. Additionally, I can set other things like color, I can change it, or even um, the coordinates. So set x, let's say 15. So let's run that and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, by world with a different color, a different X coordinate and a different text. So use that if you want to change your box. Uh, another cool thing you can use is gradients. Now let me show you how that works. 
All right, so we got our box here. Now I want to store that in a variable. For example, w. And I can call some methods from the w var variable. And I'm going to need to call set gradient and give it a value, 0 for no gradient, 1 for a vertical bar gradient, and 2 for a horizontal bar gradient. Additionally, I'm going to need to set the second color. For that, I'm going to call set color 2. And I'm just going to make it black, for example. So it's going to be a bar with a gradient from white to black. Let's save it and run it. And there you have it, a bar with a gradient. All right, so let's see how to interact with some blocks. Now, in my case, I'm going to use an MFSU, and I'm going to show you how to see all the methods that you can use to interact with it. So I'm going to use wire modems in my, in my case, but I suppose you could also use uh, wireless ones. OK, so this is uh, MFSU 5. And let's create a program. First, I'm going to wrap the router so I can use it to send remote commands. And then, oops. And then I'm going to uh, call on the MFSU5, I think it was, the function uh, list methods and store it in methods. And then I'm going to simply print methods. And that's going to show me a list of all the methods that I can use to interact with that block. So let's run it. Oh yeah, get inventory name, get store, get capacity, get output, etc. So why don't uh, we use one of these? Get store seems like a good one. So instead of calling list methods, let's call um, get stored and let's store it in a variable. store EU and finally let's print it on the screen. Now it should print zero because the MFSU is empty. There you go. How about if we put a Lapotron crystal inside? Let's run it again and now it should show us a different number and it will show a bigger number as the MFSU fills up with energy. Now, uh, you can also choose to, um, you know, wrap the bridge here and have the whole system show you information on the screen instead of the uh, computer. Let me show you an example of information being displayed on the screen from a peripheral. So here I've got this computer running a program that reads information of the reactor in fact, it reads the heat and it reads the energy stored of the MFSU. So if I want to link classes to this terminal here, I get all the information on the top left, right like I customized it. Uh, so let's turn the, on the reactor and we'll see the black bar, black bar on the uh, green red bar go up and that is telling me that the reactor is gaining heat and the MFSU is going to go up or down depending of whether it's gaining energy or not. So let's make it gain a little bit more energy and maybe we'll see it go up in a sec. I think it just went up a little bit. So yeah, that's one way you can choose to display information. But the possibilities are basically endless. The glasses have a special feature. They actually have an integrated microphone which you can use to pass commands to a program. So let's take a look at how that works. I've got a program here that has this line. I'm calling os.pullEvent with chat command as the argument. And I'm storing chat commands, the, the string, into the event variable. And the command that you pass with the glasses is going to be stored into the command variable here, to the second variable. And then I'm comparing the command to a string. And if it matches, then it's going to run a series of instructions. So let's see this in action. Uh, to pass a command, uh, you need uh, to equip the glasses, which should be linked to the bridge you're connecting to. And then you just run in the chat dollar, dollar, and whatever command you want to pass. So why don't we run a um, command that does not match the one in the program? 
So nothing is happening and the program ends because there is um, it doesn't catch that condition. Uh, however, if we were to run the program again and pass it the right command, it's going to start running the instructions, which is to uh, display some information on the classes about the uh, applied energy statistics network. In this case, it's storing one item. If I put an advanced computer, it's storing two items. You can see it's working. So that's the microphone feature. All right, let's see a few more examples of how Open Peripheral can interact with blocks. Now here I've got a computer which has a few programs interacting with uh, a few blocks. Uh, first of all, we're going to see how it interacts with the Tesseract. So I've created a, a program that's called Tesseract. And as you can see here, I just connect to it by running local peripheral equal peripheral.wrap on the right side. And then I run a bunch of instructions. Let's see how that works. When I run it, it's going to tell me who the owner is, what frequency the Tesseract is at, whether it can receive one, whether it can send. And I can uh, actually change most of these things. Now, the first function I can run is, um, is owner, which allows me to put an owner and it will return true if the owner is the one I put and it will return false if it's not. So let's try my name and I'm not the owner. I can also set the frequency with open peripheral. So let's try 400 and now the frequency is at 400. If we take a look at the machine, it's at 400 here as well. Additionally, I can change um, I can change the can receive here. Let's say send and receive and you see they're false. Uh, can receive is false, can send is true. If I refresh, it's going to change to the settings that are now in the machine. If I say uh, send only and then I refresh, then only can send will be true. So that's an example of what uh, you can read off a Tesseract. Now let's try reading information of a chest. A chest that contains a bunch of stuff from uh, different mods. And basically I've got a program that runs uh, from slot 0 to slot 26. And it tells me the item ID, the uh, metadata of the item, and how many items of, uh, are there in the slot. Additionally, if it finds an empty slot, it's not going to do anything about it. So let's check the inventory program out. And there you have it. Let's say slot 4, ID 1311, damage 0, quantity 1. Let's take a look at slot 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, with ID 1311, and damage is metadata, in this case 0. And it said it, there's only one item and there's only one pair of glasses. So that's how the inventory program works. And open peripheral allows you to, uh, you know, use the chess as a peripheral. That's why I can get all that, all of that information. Right. Let's take a look at a program that interacts with a redstone energy cell, which has this energy and max output and max input at zero, and inter interacts with it through a wire router. So let's run energy cell. Now I've made it, so I get these readings: the energy that's stored and the rate at which is sending and receiving energy, and I can change that. Now I've changed this energy send rate to 50, and if I check the redstone energy cell, you can see that same value over here. And let's also change the energy that it can receive. Now, as you can see, if I press refresh, the energy store doesn't change because it's not receiving any energy. It's at, set at zero, even though this uh, you know, machine could be easily input energy. As the moment I uh, change the energy receive to 100, for example, and I refresh, and uh, the energy is going to start going up because now it's accepting energy at the rate that I specified. All right. Uh, another item, another block that the open peripheral mode can read information from is an engine. It can read the amount, it can read the tanks. So I've got a program here called BC Engine and it's basically gonna show me some uh, the tanks. Now the first tank is it's telling me it has an ID of 11 that corresponds to lava if you take a look in NEI lava steel 11 and it's saying that there, there's 10,000 in it and the second tank 
has an ID of 9 which corresponds to water and it has a capacity of 10,000 and an amount of 10,000 so it's actually full. So that's how you read information of an engine. Here is another example of what you can do with open peripheral. I've got a big tank and a column of thermal expansion glowstone illuminators. Now the glowstone illuminators have a function that's called set color which allows me to set uh, their color. And I've taken advantage of this and I've hooked up the tank and the glowstone illuminators so that as I put liquid inside the glowstone illuminators are going to change color. So let's run the program and every few seconds is going to tell me the amount of liquid in the tank. And now if I put some lava, as soon as the first level has a little bit of liquid, the first glow to illuminator is going to change color. If I keep putting lava and I reach the second level, as soon as I do that, I get the second glow to illuminator. And if I check inside the computer, it's telling me the amount of liquid there, there's inside. If I were to destroy a tank, it's going to detect that and it's going to calculate the um, lamp level according to the tank that's left. So if I break another one, it's going to fill it up more because now there's more, more liquid relative to the total size of the tank. Now if I fill it up to the top, all the lamp sh lamps should be um, red. And the easiest way to get the methods of a uh, block is to put it adjacent to a computer and then um, run peripheral wrap on it and save it in a variable and then run list methods on it. So that's the easiest way you're gonna be able to see everything that you're able, able to accomplish with a block and even if the block has uh, methods you can use. And if you want to mess around with the programs that I've shown you in this spotlight you can find a link to them in the description. So that was the Open Peripheral mod. If you like it, you can check it out in the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.